from this module we are going to start discussing some of the most powerful and beautiful results of complex analysis now so far we have seen what is a contour integral and we have also seen some examples now while we were discussing these examples there were some questions that we observed so for example when a contour integral around a simple closed curve is zero and similarly when a contour integral is independent of path so in some questions it was independent of path but in some examples it was not independent of path now uh, these questions and many more questions like this so they will be discussed in a much more mathematically precise way in the following modules now we are going to start our discussion from one of the most basic and fundamental but important result of complex analysis known as the cauchy gorsa theorem now as the name suggests that it is a, a contribution of two mathematicians so namely augustin louis cauchy a french mathematician and another french mathematician edward gorsa now uh, it is a kind of series of two results so the first result was given by cauchy known as the cauchy's theorem it was given in 1825 and then gorsa uh, generalized it in 1883 and hence uh, the most generalized version of uh, cauchy's theorem is basically this uh, cauchy gorsa theorem which was introduced by uh, which was generalized by uh, gorsa in 1883 so this result basically links uh, two branches of mathematics so namely topology and complex analysis okay so uh, we will see uh, when we will uh, when we will discuss this theorem that there are some topological terms involved so these topological terms uh, define Uh, the kind of domain in which we are working so if the domain is simply connected then that is our requirement that is our basic requirement of this theorem so if a domain is simply connected then any uh, contour integral around a simple closed curve is going to be zero so that's uh, uh, more or less uh, the uh, statement of cauchy gorsa theorem now this uh, uh, theorem has many important consequences as well so for example uh, it will help us to solve contour integrals if your contour is extremely complicated so it will uh, uh, of course under some conditions so it will simplify the contour uh, if the contour is too much complicated and similarly it will uh, give us uh, conditions under which an analytic function has an anti derivative okay so of course uh, this result will be used in proving that every any analytic function has an anti derivative so this is a kind of uh, important result now uh, to begin with our discussion we are going to start with some uh, topological terms okay so this will help us in defining the kind of domain in which we are working so uh, let's begin uh, with some recall so what is a domain so we have seen this uh, in our earlier modules of this course that what is a domain so it is a connected okay so that's the first condition and the second condition is it should be open okay so uh, what is open so a set is open if we take any point from the set then we can always sketch an epsilon neighborhood so in other words a disk with radius epsilon and of course an open disk the boundary is not included and if uh, there exists such epsilon such that all of this disk is contained in the set s and if we can do that for each and every point of the set s then the set is called open set and what is connected so connected is if we can take any two points from the set s and if we can find a path uh, or a curve that join these two points so for example this is point p1 this is point p2 and if we can find path between any two points of s then we say that it is a connected set okay so we can we can take the set in the following way as well so this is also connected because if we take any two points there is always a curve that can join these two points okay so if we can do that for any two points then we say that uh, the set is connected so if a, a set is connected as well as open then we say that it is a domain now uh, if we have a simple closed curve uh, then this simple closed curve divides the plane into two parts so one is the interior of uh, the curve okay so as you can see uh, this is the interior of the curve c and the other set is the exterior of the curve now this simple 
this simple result is known as the Jordan curve theorem but uh, the proof is um, uh, extremely complicated uh, but uh, to state this result is, is a relatively simple task. So uh, take any simple closed curve C it divides uh, the plane into two parts and as you can see uh, that uh, one part is bounded which is the interior and the exterior is not bounded and uh, let's have a look at another example now once again this is a simple closed curve so because we can start from this point and we can move on in this way and going like this so there is no intersection between any two points of the curve and we can end at the same point so it is simple it is closed so this simple closed curve uh, it definitely has an interior and this interior is once again bounded and then it has also an exterior and this exterior is unbounded so this is a Jordan curve theorem and another uh, terminology uh, from topology that we are going to need is what is a simply connected domain now uh, if we want to define it in a very mathematically precise way then it is not possible um, uh, and it is uh, out of the uh, domain of this course so we are just going to uh, uh, state it in a very intuitive way okay so a domain d is called simply connected if interior of every simple closed contour c is contained in d so if you take uh, for example this set or this domain d and uh, if you take any simple closed contour okay so let's consider this simple closed contour so let's call it c okay now as uh, you can see that uh, the interior of this c so the interior of c is entirely contained in this uh, domain d and similarly we can take any other d and uh, if we can do the same procedure and if uh, the interior of any simple closed contour is contained in d then this uh, domain d is simply connected and if we cannot do it then we say that it is multiply connected domain so for example uh, the example you can see on the screen so let's call it d1 let's call it d2 now d1 and d2 are domains and they are not simply connected so why it is not simply connected so let's consider this example so this is the curve c and as you can see that the interior of c is not contained in d okay so interior of c is not contained in d1 so that's why it is not simply connected and it is uh, multiply connected or uh, it is in particular this d1 is doubly connected in this case so why it is uh, uh, doubly connected because there is one hole in this domain okay so due to this uh, one hole we say that it is doubly connected and similarly this domain d2 once again uh, if we take this curve c then the interior of c is contained in d2 so let's call it c1 so interior of c1 is contained in d2 but if we take any other contour so which contains this uh, hole so let's call it c2 now in this case the interior of c2 is not contained in d2 so once again this d2 is not simply connected and it is uh, multiply connected and since there is one hole in the domain so that's why we call it doubly connected and uh, similarly moving on if there are two holes then we call it triply connected and up to so on so once again it is not simply connected uh, because if we take this curve then the interior of this curve is not contained in the domain and similarly we can find many other examples and since there are two holes so both of these domains are triply connected domain now another uh, terminology that we are going to need is the direction of the contour so uh, as we know that uh, a contour is basically a, as a parametric representation okay c z of t t greater than or equal to a and b so uh, you start from when t is equal to a so you start from z of a and you move on and uh, okay so let's say this is the end so this is z of b so there is a direction okay so there is a, a direction so if it is a, a closed contour then of course you will end up at uh, the same point okay so so you will end up here so z of a is equal to z of b 
but still there is a direction in the path. So you start from Z of A and move in one way and end up at Z of B and you are moving in some direction. Now if uh, the direction or the arrows which are mentioned on the curve are basically according to the increasing values of the parameter because if you start from here then you are moving in the direction of increasing parameter. So as you, can, you move on then the parameter is also increasing. Okay, so uh, this value, so let's call it Z of C. Uh, so this C must be greater than A. Okay, so as you move on, the parameter is also increasing and you are also moving in the direction of increasing parameter. If this happens, then we say that it is a, a positive direction of the contour. And uh, if uh, you are moving in the opposite direction, then we call it the negative direction. Now, there is a, a simple way of checking when a closed, simple closed contour is uh, positively oriented or negatively oriented. So, what is that way? So, if you move in the direction, okay, so if you move in the direction of the contour and uh, if you move in the direction of increasing parameter and if your left hand is towards uh, the interior of the contour, then we say that it is positively oriented. So, as you can see in this picture, as you move in this direction, then the left hand is towards the interior of the contour. So, that's why it is positively oriented. And similarly, in this uh, uh, case of C, so if you move on, then your left hand will be always on the uh, towards the interior of the contour C. So, that's why this is positively oriented. So, both of these uh, con simple closed contours are examples of uh, positively oriented simple closed curve. So, we are also going to need uh, this discussion. Okay, of course, uh, if C is positively oriented, then minus C is negatively oriented. Now, uh, one of the important results from multivariable calculus that we are going to uh, need uh, to prove uh, cauchy gorsa theorem is that uh, uh, Green's theorem. So, what is a Green's theorem? So, Green's theorem involves uh, a simple closed contour which is positively oriented and it relates the line integral along this uh, uh, curve C with the surface integral on the interior of the curve C. Okay, so if R is the interior of this simple closed contour C and C is this uh, positively oriented simple closed contour, then it is this, this is the relationship between the line integral over C and the surface integral on the interior of uh, this contour C. Of course, if you want to integrate it, then the P and Q are continuous and if we want to evaluate this then uh, we need to impose that px py qx qy are basically continuous partial derivative okay so px is the partial derivative of p with respect to x py is the partial derivative of p with respect to y qx is the partial derivative of q with respect to x up to so on so that's uh, uh, green's theorem which relates line integral with the surface integral on the interior of the simple closed curve c now, uh, we are not looking at the proof of the Green's theorem, but let's have a look at a simple example uh, which illustrates Green's theorem. So, in this example, we have a unit square and uh, so this is 1 and this is 1. So, and the curve C which is positively oriented, in other words, we are moving in a counterclockwise direction. So, this curve is basically uh, the boundary of this square, okay, and the interior of this square is denoted with R. Now, uh, let's apply uh, Green's theorem to evaluate this line integral. So, in, instead of in, uh, evaluating this line integral, we convert this line integral into surface integral using this Green's theorem and then we evaluate this. Okay, so this is going to be equal to a double integral over this region R. Okay, so in this region R, we can see that x varies from 0 to 1 and y varies from 0 to 1. So, let's say that the interior integral is dx and the exterior is dy and the variation of x and y are both 0 to 1. Now, let's apply Green's theorem. So, Green's theorem says that uh, this is, uh, if this is p, this is q, then I need to write down uh, partial q by partial x. So, partial q by partial x in this case is going to be partial x by partial x which is 1 and similarly partial p by partial y. Okay. So, uh, once again, 0 to 1, 0 to 1, and this is going to be equal to 1 and 1. So, basically, 
this is going to be equal to 1 minus 1 which is 0 so this is a definite integral so that's why the integral of uh, 0 is going to be equal to 0 so in this case this uh, line integral is basically equal to 0 so that's how we use uh, Green's theorem to convert a line integral into a surface integral and then evaluate it. Now let's define what is Cauchy's theorem now. Now if we have a, an analytic function f in a simply connected domain d, now uh, we have seen what is a simply connected domain and if we have a uh, contour c which is uh, simply connected and it lies entirely in the domain d and then there is another extra condition that if f prime is continuous in domain d then this contour integral along this uh, contour c is always zero now this condition that f prime is continuous so uh, this is uh, removed in its generalization so this is cauchy's theorem introduced by cauchy in 1825 but then in 1883 gorsa generalized it and uh, he said that we don't need this condition and uh, that generalization is known as the cauchy gorsa theorem so for the Cauchy's theorem, we need this condition and we will be using this condition to prove a Cauchy's theorem. Now the proof of Cauchy's theorem will be part of our next module. Now in this module, we saw some topological terminologies and Green's theorem. So these kinds of things are going to be needed in our future discussion. So in particular, we are going to uh, need Green's theorem in the proof of Cauchy's theorem.